Okay, so continuing with my IKEA kitchen. Uh, yesterday I did uh, the vertical panels. So that went fairly well. Uh, today what I'm doing is I'm just kind of trying to size up the island and just trying to get everything sort of uh, semi lined up here. Uh, I'm just going to walk around this way. So I've got the, uh, this is uh, shown the back of the cabinet, of course the, the sink cabinet. There's a set of pot drawers and then the dishwasher is going to be on the end. Uh, so basically the lineup is to be, the sink is basically going to be in line with the stove. And then the dishwasher will be in line with this cabinet. And this set of pot drawers will be in line with that set of drawers. So this is kind of the kind of the arrangement now. I got it up on the legs. It's kind of hard to see because the kitchen now seems the kitchen is seeming a lot smaller now, but anyway, I, I got more stuff in it. But here, here we go. So that's the general layout of the island. Uh, of course, the dishwasher is not really hooked up to anything. It's just I put it there because uh, there's a there's a piece that goes on the back that has to be cut and fit, and there's a piece that goes on the end that has to be cut and fit. So I just kind of put that there more for sizing and more to see, uh, you know, just more for figure out my spacing and stuff. Like I don't. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, obviously, I got lots of room here, but you want lots of room here because the dishwasher door obviously opens down, and then the oven door opens down. So if you've got everything like that, like, of course, this is the old oven, but I mean, still, I wanna, I don't want to be cramped in here. So I think this is a pretty good distance. I'm not sure what the standards are. Uh, having said that. I want a good distance here, but I also don't want to cut myself off here because uh, I'm noticing that this space here might be a little bit too tight. I don't think this is going to work. I think I'm going to have to push it more this way, unfortunately, because there's also going to be uh, the countertop's going to be overhanging here. So there's going to be an overhang of uh, 10 inches, and I'm going to have stools here so for seating. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to make this a little bit tighter over here. <clears throat> Maybe the, it was just a rough estimate with that light fixture up there, but maybe the light should be in the middle of this island. I had kind of just estimated it, but maybe that would be for the best because I'm just picturing now with this little doorway here, this little, this is the main through fare to go to the back door and that's the main entrance to the house because we almost never use the front. Uh, I don't want to be blocking myself off here, so I might, I'm going to have to move this over. Anyway, this is just a tentative layout uh, to see how my panels are going to fit. I've got to, uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw the level on there and I'm going to try to, I'm going to jack the legs up and try to get everything uh, level and square. And then maybe I'll shimmy this over this way a little bit. And uh, yeah, see how it goes from there. Okay. Okay, not exactly sure where I left off. Um, working on the island again. I uh, got everything together. I cut my I cut my side pieces up to height, and I've got this one over here cut and installed. So I got the proper reveal so the door can butt this way. I got the top. I lopped off the top level. And we got the finished edge on the bottom. And it's, this one here is actually nice and tight. So I like this one. Now the, now the next piece that I got to do is the big one for the back. And because uh, I have a finished piece here, a finished piece on the back and a finished piece at the end, there was no way around. Um, you have to end up with a finished edge here. And if I left this one finished, actually I could not leave this one finished. I would have had to cut this one flush to here, which would have made a, uh, a raw edge. Then I could have put the long piece and butt it over and that would have been finished. But then down at this end, uh, I guess I would have, I would have had to, to cut this one as well and leave it butt uh, on the back. But then I still have to cut it to length. So the the long piece here would have had a raw edge, so there's just no way around it. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to leave these long 
doesn't say in the instructions, I'm not sure, but I'm going to leave these long. Now if I leave this long and leave this one over here long, then I will cut the long piece to fit inside. So it'll go inside here and inside here like this. Then I'll lop the top. And then uh, this, the back's not really going to matter if this is sticking out because uh, our countertop is going to have an extension of 10 inches uh, to have like a breakfast bar. So this is going to work out just perfect because I was racking my brain how to eliminate a raw edge here. And there was no really other way except if I maybe mitered. And I could only just imagine what my miter would have looked like. So I think this is going to be a good solution. I think it's going to work, not sure. So I'm going to leave these long so they stick out a couple inches. But it's not going to matter because i got a finished edge, a finished edge, and my other finished edge will be in here. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm thinking this should work out. Now the next step I'm on to now, and what I don't really understand is how to attach the large piece on the back. Um, I'm not sure how you attach it to this. Obviously this is going to have to go because we're not using a rail. And these flimsy backs, you can't do anything with these because they're paper thin. So, um, And then obviously this is going to have to sort of hover, hover as it comes along and then attach to this end. And I have no idea right now how I'm going to do that. Now in the kit there is one item that I have not used yet. And it's, I'm thinking that probably is what it's going to be used for. I don't know, I'm guessing right now. But I got these strips here. I've got these, kind of like an MDF strip with a bunch of holes. So I'm almost wondering if if you use these maybe as, as a back support with angle brackets. Uh, these little kits, are these ones here, <clears throat> it's this. And it comes with angle brackets, so I maybe that's something to do with that. I'm not sure. I'm going to investigate that. But the island is taking shape. Uh, in the beginning, I you know I, I, I thought I had a cabinet missing. I thought I was missing a box, but I'm not. The uh, dishwasher kind of the dishwasher kind of is just freestanding, and obviously you have to somewhat form the box around it. And then the countertop sits on top. Uh, the company doing the countertop is uh, separate. It's not IKEA. But I ordered all my, uh, my countertops through them. So once, uh, once my boxes are in and I feel that they're level and secure, like those ones are, I'm working on this one right now, then I can call them and hopefully they can come in and uh, they're going to do a final uh, measurement. And then they're going to cut and bring the stuff and install it. So I, I got the, I chose to go with the quartz counters. It was a little bit more, but uh, in the price of the quartz, it includes delivery, installation, and they will even cut out the hole and mount the undermounted sink and the tap. So uh, the counters were not exactly cheap. They were about 3,500. But the regular uh, melamine counter would have been would have been in the 2,000 range anyway. So this way here, I'm paying a little bit more, but I'm getting the quartz, and it includes all of their labor. So uh, my job here is just to prepare this, and then after that, it'll be in their hands. And then of course after that, I'm going to be responsible for running the new plumbing. But like I talked about before, that'll come from downstairs. I'm just going to drill some holes in here. Down the road at some point, I'm going to have a hot and cold and a drain. Um, that's all going to be down the basement. The basement's unfinished, so it's not an issue. Uh, so that's where I'm at with this island. My dilemma now is how to attach all this together. Basically, this back piece. I have to measure and cut the back piece. That's my last large strip. And somehow attach it to this corner. I have no clue right now, but I'm going to figure that out. Okay. Okay, continuing with my island here. I think I've figured out uh, the way to attach this back piece. I've got the large back piece cut. I've got to cut the length 
And like I said, the, the, the cut end is going to go inside the finish panel, like this. But there was no way to attach the back. And I just talked about this, uh, it was basically like this. So how are you supposed to attach this on here? And that's what that strip that I just talked about, that's exactly what this is. So basically, you got, there's several of these strips, and they all come with little notches. And you can easily measure, for example, this length of cabinet lines up on that line there. So basically where that was, I uh, in that groove on the end, there was a groove, this piece was longer. I marked it and lopped it off. It comes with these brackets that you can mount loosely like this. And then all you have to do is take this piece and you mount, excuse me, you mount it from the back like this. It will go inside and you just push it in. And then once, once it lines up here, you'll be able to make the fasteners on this end. And that's what gives the backing for, uh, for this larger finished piece of trim. So I've got one done here. Uh, why is this so damn blurry? There we go. So there's one piece in. I said, cut it to length. Mount the hardware first, and then bring it inside and fasten it. Same as the same kind of hardware as what the um, as what the uh, the brackets for the wall hangers. But the they are a little bit different. But it takes the same style of screws. So once you get this piece on the back. This gives some rigidity and then you can then mount this big panel up against it and then you can drive your screws from in here and there's a little bit more. Here you go, it gets all sandwiched with this little thing. <clears throat> it gives it a little bit of more strength and just because uh, obviously there'd be no way that you would never be able to hang anything off of this. It's just it's one notch above cardboard but this stuff here has a bit more body to it. So you drive the screws from in here. Now obviously there's nothing at the bottom. I take it that's just meant to to hang up against this this piece here so I'm not sure it's basically gonna go in like this if I can slide this with one hand I'm just gonna drive this in like this and that's gonna get screwed in from the inside here from the inside um, like I said there's gonna be a little piece sticking out here but no big deal it leaves me with nice finished edges all around and then the the countertop will be here and then the the breakfast bar area comes out this way so maybe even a little added support there if you want to consider it that uh, that's a cut edge so that should fit in a cut edge so that should fit fairly nicely there uh, obviously this panel's already in uh, it's hard to get some good filming because I'm just too close here but anyway this is the back. This is going to be the back of the island. Of course, the blue film is going to come off. So now I've got a strip at the top to add a little bit of body to that flimsy uh, to that flimsy back. So I'll be able to drive my screws in from this way. <clears throat> so I'm just about ready to attach this panel now, and then uh, I'll be up to this corner here. I am still. I still don't know what to do with this. I'm running out of hardware and I'm not sure. I know that the the cut end is going to be tucked inside so you won't be able to see it. It's not a perfect cut, but it's the best I could do. Um, once that's in there, worst case, I could run a bead of a little bead of caulking there in that inside corner. No one's ever going to know the difference. Um, once I figure out how to attach this corner, I'm going to make an update. Uh, for now, I think I'm good to go ahead. And start fastening this one. I gotta I'll put that I'll put this rail in. This rail will go in the sink cabinet back here, and then I will install this one. Uh, I'm not sure how or if there's any way to fasten the end. Obviously, I do have a brad nailer, but I am not interested in going like this because that'll make some dents and divots that I don't want. Uh, okay in an area that would be concealed, but this is a finished edge, so maybe that's all that's required is, is this. So, through here, through this layer, and it's going to bite into the, the back piece. Okay, I will fasten this back piece, 
and the next time I do a little bit of filming hopefully I will have figured out how to put this corner together okay okay continuing with the IKEA kitchen we got the uh, I got the back all boxed in I got the side piece in right now my trusty assistant Gabby say hello Gabby Hello. is peeling all this blue film she's been wanting to do this so I thought I'll let her do it um, she's peeling all the blue protective film um, like I said, I struggled with this one. This is the, uh, it's really not a cabinet. Like I said before, it's the opening for the dishwasher. I really don't know if I did this right. I could not find any information. So basically, the only thing holding the dishwasher in is the back finish piece. Oh, that's noisy. And then this side, fin uh, this side finish piece. There's no cabinet for this. So I just used some of these uh, reinforcement brackets. Uh, I don't know if this is right. I just kind of made a little stiffener in the back with a couple of angle brackets. I put one down here as well. So basically this end panel is really, is really, if you see my hand here, it really is not, I don't know, I, I don't know. This is probably not right. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be strong enough to hold the... I don't know at this point what holds the slab of stone. I really don't. I know it basically sits on here. But at this point, this is supposed to be just finishing edge. And there's nothing left in the kit. Like I said, there was a couple of mistakes in my kit. I got an extra drawer piece and I'm missing hinges. But anyway, I came up with this. The opening is to be 24 for a standard dishwasher. I made it 24 and a half, so we'll have a little fudge factor on each edge. I thought it might be wise since the floors are so uneven. If I have to jack either way, I didn't want the opening to become too tight. Uh, for example, my stove, I made uh, 30 on the money. And as you can see, 30 and 30, there's really not, you know, there's basically no room. So yes, it's a nice tight fit. That's what you're supposed to have. But when I get my new stove in, I'm going to want to level and move it around so that it's perfectly level like these boxes. So uh, I don't know. This might be a little bit problematic if I'm trying to reef on one side, for example. It might rub on another or... Anyway, I'm not sure. This is done for now. Everything is done. I'm just getting ready to. Uh, I'm just getting ready to call. I'm gonna call the stone people when I go back to work. They're gonna come in and they're gonna do a final. Uh, they're gonna do a final measurement. I hope it's not an issue because I've already paid for the stone, and I've now made this opening a half inch bigger. So my entire island is a little bit bigger than what the plan says. Hopefully that's not an issue, and that's kind of why the stone is not cut ahead of time. Uh, the stone is measured and paid for, but they will come and do a final inspection before. They'll come and measure before they come with the actual stone. Uh, another thing I have to do as well is I've got the entire kitchen on these uh, plastic legs. And obviously the plastic legs are fantastic to jack everything up uh, but I don't think they're strong enough so we're gonna be going underneath and uh, I'm gonna be adding some wooden members under there and according to my little plan which I have a plan over if I didn't lose it is it this one I don't think it's yes it's this one this represents the boxes and you can see how you put them up on the plastic feet, but then underneath they show the patterns on what this is. This basically is my arrangement. I got three boxes, sort of, or well, at least two boxes. So I'm gonna have a two by four or whatever here, here, and a couple transverse, just to help uh, distribute and support the load. Uh, the plastic legs are fantastic for, um, leveling and holding things up but you do need uh, some wooden members underneath now uh, 
The pieces, like I mentioned before, the wooden pieces that go underneath, I believe are three and a half. That's them right here. And they are, yes, they are three and a half. So I went and jacked my legs up uh, to four and a half. Because that's what the plan called for when I installed, uh, when I started with the pantries. They, they indicated to set your legs, when I, uh, those pantries back here, they said to set the legs at four and a half. And I guess you don't need the wood on those ones because they're hanging. But anyway, because I've gone symmetrical all around, I gotta maintain that. So everything that I've done is gonna be about an inch, almost an inch taller. And I'm okay with that because I'm six foot one, almost six foot two, and I hate being crouched over to do stuff. So my counters are gonna be about an inch taller than what I guess the standard is. There is a bit of a range in there. So I thought I'd rather be a little bit taller than shorter. And uh, uh, like for example, the stove, uh, if my counters were too high, the legs can just be jacked up. That's not a problem. And the dishwasher goes underneath. That's not a problem. If there's a little gap around the problem, uh, sorry, if there's a little gap around the dishwasher, well, we can either live with that or add a filler strip or adjust the legs. Uh, for now, this is what I'm going with. The kitchen is 100% together. Uh, still no hinges. I tried to go to my local hardware store yesterday, but it was Sunday. <clears throat> they were closed. So I'm going to try again today. If I could score some hinges, I can have all these doors installed. And uh, I'm going to do the lumber underneath to stiffen this island up. I'm also going to do the lumber uh, down the line uh, for this bench seat to stiffen that up. But for the most part, this kitchen is together. I've only got uh, two more days before I go back to my real job. So I'm happy with the progress. Uh, obviously we're not going to have run a sink or running water or anything like that until the quartz uh, people show up. But uh, that's okay. I'm happy with the progress and I'm happy with the kitchen. And uh, so yeah, so now we're just going to, we're going to peel off some of this blue stuff. See what we get. And uh, we might try to go uh, on the hunt again today for some uh, hinges. Okay, that's all for now. Okay, continuing on with the uh, IKEA kitchen island. So my last video I had pretty much the island together. Uh, just a bit of a repeat now, but anyway. Island is together. All the blue has been peeled. That's what it's going to look like. So what I did today is, as per the recommendation, I added some... i got to get down here. I added some lumber underneath. So obviously this is the lumber, the, the, the three and a half inches, basically like a two by four. So what I did, because uh, I made everything a little bit higher, um, like I said, I used the legs all around to jack everything up and level the island, but it's a little bit wobbly on these legs. So I, maybe it would be approved for a laminate countertop, I'm not sure. But uh, it's certainly supposed to be anchored down. Um, well, I think, I don't know if it matters what countertop you get. I'm getting quartz, so it's gonna be heavy. And there's also gonna be, there's gonna be plumbing and electrical coming in this island. So there can basically be no movement. So uh, I've added the, uh, the lumber that was included in the kit, with basically a two by four, but I've added little strips of one inch, basically. So I got everything attached together and attached to the cabinet. So I got one here as recommended, one on the other end as recommended, and two that run this way, kind of make like a little bridge on either, uh, kind of spans the, the two cabinets here. So I've had to do a little bit of shimming uh, because the floor is uneven. This one here at the top is shaved. This one here has a paint stick and that one here has a piece of quarter inch trim. So that's how I made it work. It's all brad nailed from the inside. So now uh, the island of course now can still be moved because uh, these pieces of wood are still not fastened. Uh, I made that little indent there so somehow I, I'm hoping I'll be able to drive a screw or two like this. There are angle brackets. Um, I don't know if I'll use that. Maybe I'll try. 
I'm not sure yet. I'm not there yet. This is what I got done so far. The island is much sturdier with the lumber. And uh, the other thing I jumped into was uh, this thing that I've been talking about for a while, which is the bench seat. I had it attached to a rail. I decided to abandon that. And again, I got some lumber. I used my own two by fours and I jacked this up. So I used uh, some lumber this way. Um, one over here, one over here. I may end up doing a center one, but for now I got this leveled up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center it with the window. I found this, I finally figured out what this little piece is gonna be for. And what this is gonna be for is gonna be for the sides. So I'm gonna slice this piece down the middle. So there's gonna be a finished edge, a finished face here, and a finished face here. A little bit of a waste, but anyway, it's to finish off the doors. And then I do have one piece that I'm going to slice, another, my last, very last piece, I'm gonna slice, and I'm gonna lay on top. And that's gonna be the, uh, that's gonna be the finished bench seat. Of course, the doors are gonna go on. I will add another center support and once uh, my side pieces are on, side pieces, top piece, I'll obviously, this will, there'll be a requirement here for filler, filler and toe kick. So I've talked a lot about filler. I haven't done one single one yet. This is the Ikea kitchen. Uh, right now, still kind of, I'm going to call this one the island. And uh, I don't know if you can see, I did a little owie over here. Try not to do this on yours. I don't even know if you can see it. The screw, I screwed from the inside. There's a little tiny peak there because I went a little bit too deep with the screw. Uh, yeah, so you want to try to avoid that. That's really my only my only visible thing, but the, uh, the breakfast bar will hang over here, so I don't think that'll ever be seen, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, so yeah, progress is good, it's slow. Um, this is what I'm doing now. Island somewhat somewhat secured and the window seat now I think I'm going to slice the two side pieces attach them maybe lay the top and I think I'm gonna call it a day I got a few things left to do um, yeah IKEA kitchen install going fairly well okay so this is gonna be the last video on the kitchen for a couple of weeks uh, I'm going back to my real job, my marine job. Um, yeah, so I'll be gone for two weeks. So this is uh, this is how far I got with the kitchen. Uh, ha I'm happy with the progress. Excuse the jumping around. I'm happy with the progress. Come a long way. Uh, I was a little bit slow going. Uh, I made it to my hardware store, finally. I went to two hardware stores and uh, well, one of them just it was a smaller store and they just had bits and pieces of hinges. So I I wasn't going to risk. I didn't want any mismatches. And uh, I got to looking at these hinges and uh, <clears throat> there's lots of different ones. So uh, I went to two hardware. I went to a bigger one also. And uh, they, they had quite a few more. But there's so many different styles and types that I just thought I'm not going to risk it. These hinges are actually very expensive. So I'm going to wait for Ikea to reopen, or maybe I'll try to touch base with them again somehow online. But anyway, no success with the hinges. This is pretty much where I'm going to leave off. Everything is in place. All the side trim pieces are in, the back piece on the island. Uh, I progressed yesterday. I finished off yesterday with my bench seat. So, like I mentioned before, it was not going to work with the rail, so I detached it. Uh, I made my own uh, footing for it. It's actually very sturdy now. I had to put a couple of shims in there because the floor is quite tilted in that corner. But my top piece I ripped down and fits very nice under the window. I'm just working on getting it level now. Uh, I was a As I pushed this piece in, it actually helped to push the... Uh, because this pantry was leaning inwards a little tiny bit. So that's, I can still push this in just a hair or two to get this flush. And then this one here uh, is not flush, but I can pull it out. I can grab onto it and pull it out just like this until it is flush. Then I'll fasten it from underneath. I'll fasten it from underneath. Um, 
The bench seat is not fastened yet to these wooden members because my spacing I don't think is exact. I want to get this exact. So this is still free to slide. This is where I came with the kitchen. Again, my channel is called House on Pleasant Street. And I started, uh, I decided I was going to film uh, doing the chronicles of a kitchen renovation. So this is, a, this is probably going to be about v uh, video number 16 probably. So earlier on, I never, I never labeled them as IKEA kitchen uh, cabinets. I, I labeled it renovation diaries. So it never got a lot of views. Um, I'm going to call them IKEA, the IKEA kitchen install. Uh, it'll probably get more views and then people can see what it's like to actually install one of these kitchens yourself. Uh, even if you've never done it before. I'm also very new. I mean, I love YouTube. I'm on YouTube all the time, but I'm very new. I just uh, created my own channel a little while ago. I've got a handful of videos out, uh, and I'm new to the filming. I'm not very good with technology, so my videos are not... Uh, there's nothing fancy or flashy, but if anyone's interested in the IKEA kitchen, you can just go to my channel, House on Pleasant Street, and uh, you can look for, uh, obviously I'm going to label, uh, my last video I labeled the IKEA kitchen. I'm going to label this one also the IKEA kitchen. I'm not going to change my videos, but if anyone's interested in seeing this process, uh, you don't have to go back to the very beginning. It starts out as the renovation diaries, part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blah, blah, blah. You know, I talk about when I lifted all the layers of flooring up and... Uh, when we exposed this wood and there used to be an old window there that I eliminated and I pulled wires and I ran wires and it used to be a wall and it just goes on and on. But if you're interested in the Ikea bit, uh, I think it starts at my renovation diaries. I think it's video either 10 or 11. So if you look at uh, my house on Pleasant Street, renovation diaries, part 10, about 10 to 15 really shows, uh, you know, when I get all this stuff in and it shows my plan and it kind of just kind of shows really how you can do this yourself. It's not perfect, but you do it yourself. You literally save $5,000 because that's what they wanted for the install was $5,000 plus plus. And uh, they claimed they could do this in two days. I mean, I've been at this for a little over two weeks. Of course, the prep work is really the hard, the hard part, like taking the old stuff out, living through it, running the wires. Uh, I did, you know, there's video showing where I pulled down the old, uh, all the old lath and plaster and the stippled ceiling. And uh, But if you're interested in just the IKEA, starts out around uh, episode or part 10 or 11, really shows how you can do this yourself. Uh, and I mean, I'm doing this myself. This is my first kitchen. I mean, I've done renos before. This is my first kitchen. This house is 102 years old. It was built in 1918. So, you know, you're dealing with uneven walls, uneven pretty much everything. I mean, <clears throat> the floor is literally like a, you know, like the wave on an ocean. So anyway, I'm going to sign off now. I am done. I'm going back to my real job tomorrow, which is my marine job working here in the harbor. Uh, so back to doing my tugboat thing for two weeks. But uh, in that meantime, hopefully I will contact the, uh, the countertop people and maybe they can come in and have a look and see if I've done this okay. See if they can do their final measurement. Okay, so one final plug. The channel is House on Pleasant Street. And this is an IKEA kitchen install. Pretty much start to finish in a 102 year old house. That's all, signing off.